hotline and get Colton Houston to make sure I get it right. Colton, what do you think when you hear that play right there from uh, from Chris good morning, Colin Sexton? Man, good morning, Barry. I, I didn't know you were going to play that. I got chills myself, man. I got fired <laughs> up this morning. Uh, no good doubt. morning, Colton. How you doing? Doing awesome. How are you doing this morning, Barry? Good. I uh, got Dad on the line, too. Go ahead, Dad. You can ask Colton questions. Go ahead. Well, I appreciate you being on. Um, I guess my question would be, because I worked in the scheduling, I didn't have anybody like you working on it. Well, I, yeah, I did, too. I had guys working on it, but I didn't like anything they did uh, uh, much. They, and they bring it, when they come in and tell me they want to play somebody, I was scared. Um, when, you, when you study schedules in order to make yourself available for the NCAA tournament if you do well in the league. Uh, if you play teams that are that win smaller divisions, uh, let's say Lipscomb last year or somebody like that, does that mean enough to you to make people feel like, make the committee feel like that that you're worthy to be in, or do you need to play a team that was second in the Pac-12? Coach, that's a great question. Obviously, you've been in that seat before, and you put a lot of schedules together, so you, you kind of understand that it's a little bit of a an art and a, and a balancing act. Um, but to answer your question, I, I think it's a little bit of both. You know, I, I don't think you can um, – you know, play a lot of teams that are going to be down in that 300 RPI range out of these smaller conferences. Um, but you also can't think that just because you play some some Lipscombs and some Louisiana Techs, you don't have to go play any good teams out of the big conferences either. I think college basketball today is so competitive, and the margin of error, you know, for getting in the tournament, being on the bubble versus off the bubble, is so small that you really have to do both. Okay. And that's what, that's what we're trying to do here at Alabama. Well, I think that's what you've done. You've got a you got a return game with Arizona, and of course you were, you know, you got the game with Baylor, but uh, and then you've got some other games. So I, you probably have done that to, to some degree. I think this year. Yeah, we have, and and you know we we really didn't. We felt like we hit on a pretty good formula last year, and you know I probably don't have to tell you this, but the schedule is a small part of it. At the end of the day, you got to recruit, and you got to have their guys ready to play, and if you don't win the games or win enough of the games, your schedule doesn't really matter much. But it is a huge part of trying to create that resume so you can get in the tournament. And we felt like we hit on a pretty good um, formula last year. We had a top-10 strength of schedule. We played Arizona and Rhode Island and UCF and BYU. You know, played some good teams from some bigger conferences. And then we, we challenged ourselves with those, with those home games against the Lipscombs and the Arlingtons of the world. And we're really trying to do something similar this year. And like you mentioned yeah. – Oh, Arizona's come back. We got Penn State, who won the NIT last year. Has a lot of guys coming back. They're going to be really good. Got them coming to Tuscaloosa and return game at Central Florida. But then Murray State, Georgia State, you know, teams that will have a really, really good shot to win their league and be tournament teams. You know, coming here to play us at Coleman Coliseum. Uh, we're talking with Colton Houston, uh, director of basketball operation out of the University of Alabama. Uh, let me ask you about this, Stephen F. Austin uh, at Stephen F. Austin. Everybody knows, well, if you follow basketball, you know what kind of team these guys have had in the past. If I was scheduling for dad and I walked in and said, hey, let's let's play Stephen F. Austin and let's go to Texas and play him. Uh, I can't say on the radio what he would have told me and, and to get out of his office, but there's a method to this. I think even Coach Johnson said you guys meet with a group out of New York to kind of help you put these things together and – uh, good road wins, and not to say you're going to win, but if you do win, uh, it's a great road, and that helps with the committee. Just what was the thinking on scheduling a game at Stephen F. Austin? That, that is a little bit different there. It is, and, and we expected that would raise some eyebrows. But <laughs> you actually bring up a great point, Barry, because a lot of coaches out there would say, no way. But I give Coach Avery all the credit in the world. Um, and it really goes back to two years ago when we won 19 games and felt like we had a really good team didn't get in. We sat down after that season and said, you know, what do we need to change? What can we do better? And the schedule was probably the primary thing we identified out of that. But he's willing to do whatever we need to do. And going to Stephen F. Austin doesn't scare him. Um, you know, he, he – uh, we know the coach out there used to be at A&M, have a good relationship, yeah, so I think Kyle that Keller. helped a little bit. But, you know, if you want to know why we're playing them, the, the simple answer is they're going to be really good. And they won 28 <laughs> games last year. I know Had a chance are. to probably – 
preseason favorite in that league, going to win 25 plus games again, and trying to trying to, to play some good teams on the road, maybe pick up a road win here or there is really important to us. So, um, but Coach Avery deserves the credit in the world. A lot of coaches would have said no way, but he's willing to do stuff like that if he thinks it's good for the program. Yeah, I think people would. And, you know, we, you and I and Dad know what a good team they are, but your fans sometimes don't. And so, if you were to go out there and you know, I mean, were to lose that game, it's not a bad loss. And I think I think that sometimes when you put this schedule together, you want to say, all right, if we lose one of these games, we can't have any bad losses on our resume, which you guys uh, did not last year. Even though Central Florida came in and, and won, I think they had some injuries, but. Uh, maybe that was your worst loss as far as resume stuff goes uh, last year. But th- those are th- some of the things you have to look at. Uh, so when they had that on the screen, have good wins, bad losses, you want to have those bad losses. You know, sometimes you can throw where there's none down there because you don't play any bad teams. You're 100% right. And w- what we try to do is you-, you can't go out and schedule Villanova 13 times and and, and really just put yourself in a hole because uh, you-, you can't over schedule. But I think what you want to do is you want to, create as many opportunities for good wins as you can. Because at the end of the day, the committee, they don't really care about your record anymore. Maybe one, you know, 10, 20 years ago they did, but they, they just look at how many good wins you have. And the beauty of playing those games uh, that could result in a good win is then if you lose it, which we, we, we never want to, we want to go 13-0 and against the schedule. But if you do lose one, it's not going to be a bad loss, like you said, because you're opponents. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I think it's also important to, not just count on one or two games on your non-conference schedule to be uh, kind of the, the good wins because you don't know how these teams are going to perform. You know, Minnesota last year for us was expected to be one of our toughest games, and they, it was a really tough game when we played them, but they had some injuries, they had some, some, some suspensions, and by Selection Sunday wasn't as, as strong a game. And um, you, know, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket, so we try to schedule multiple games that can get us good wins and that way if a couple teams overperform or underperform you, you kind of have a little bit of a um protection against some of that when you guys are putting this together i guess you kind of know uh who you're going to play twice in the league you may not know the format of it but i guess you kind of have to study that you would never say hey this team's going to be a little bit down this year so even if we uh, I'll just throw a name out there. I don't, I'm saying they're going to be down. We, even if we beat Ole Miss twice, it may not be a good win because their RPI is not going to be. You want to play the teams in, in the league, uh, Colton, don't you, that have the high RPIs to give you a better chance to get quality wins. I think that happens sometimes in the past where Alabama maybe played some teams that were struggling a little bit in the SEC, had a, a pretty good SEC record. But then when you looked at the quality of wins in the RPI, it wasn't there because those teams uh, were low in the RPI. Yep, you're 100% right again. We uh, we know the five teams we have to play twice, and we know that every year we're going to be playing Auburn, LSU, and Mississippi State twice because those are our permanent rivals. Um, but some years your SEC schedule is going to be stronger than others. and We're fortunate right now those three teams are all trending upward, obviously, you know, Auburn had a good, really good season last year, particularly to be good again. Mississippi State, uh, a lot of people are picking them to be top four or five in the league, and LSU uh, is getting better in a hurry down there with Coach Wade. So, um, yeah, you want to play good teams in the league because when Selection Sunday rolls around, they don't distinguish between SEC games and non-conference games. It's They look at all 31 or however many games you play. And, again, you, you want to play as many quality teams as you can to boost that resume. That yeah. Well, you know, it's a pretty good. Last year's a pretty good example for for listeners that really keep up with it because the non conference schedule. I mean, to be honest with you, bails you out. Yeah. Uh, when when you go with when you go, you know, maybe you lose a game or two in the league that you, you know, you felt like you should have won and didn't, and that happens to you all the time. It happened to me all the time. Uh, it, there, there's no doubt that the non conference schedule bailed you out. So that. That, that's pretty big. I think I think the, the studying of it and knowing what to do is really, really important. I, I, the, last year's a perfect example. Yeah, I mean, everyone a losing streak there at the end of the year, which wasn't fun for anybody, least of all our players, but we already had a win over Rhode Island, who was had a fantastic season. We had that win over Oklahoma, you know, that win over BYU that was away from home, which is really big for us. So, yeah, I think in a way it did bail us out. I mean, it certainly gave us a cushion to where once we got to conference play, going on a little loose wasn't going to kill us. Um, what, uh, 
Excuse me. I didn't mean to butt in just because if I think of something, I can't. I'll, I'll forget he'll it in forget. five seconds. Yeah, if he doesn't yeah, ask you immediately, no, because he'll forget um, it. What, what, what's the uh, times that you're allowed to work with your team practice-wise, the coaches? I, it's changed since I was – they they were real rigid on us, and we couldn't practice until we had to kind of do things, slip around a little bit maybe. But uh, – <laughs> Sort slip of, around a little bit. Well, not slip around, but get be darn sure that that they worked out. <laughs> put it that way. Uh, tell us, tell us, our listeners. You know the practice situations uh, as far as when the coaches can be with them throughout the throughout the year. Yeah, you're right, coach. That they do change those rules pretty often. I, I think they're trying to to find the right balance. I give them a lot of credit for listening to some feedback from the coaches and the players. And right now. Anytime they're in school, which is summer school, fall semester, spring semester, uh, this isn't during basketball season, but during those other times of the year, uh, we can do activities with them eight hours a week, and out of those eight hours, four can be basketball, and, and there's no restrictions in that four. So all summer, we actually, today is the last day of summer classes, so we, we end our eight weeks of summer today. For the past eight weeks, we've had them eight hours a week, and four of those are basketball. So we've been able to do a lot of individual skill work, we can get together with the whole team and have a practice if we want to. That the only limitation on us is four hours of that a week, and then the other out four hours is is mostly strength and conditioning, um, you know, film, you know, running on the track, getting in the weight room, all, all that kind of stuff. But there's talk about possibly changing that again and opening up some more. But but right now that four hours is what we got, and it's pretty good. I mean, you, four hours a week, you can get four days in, an hour a day. That's, that's a pretty good amount of time in the summer and in the, in the fall with the players. Uh, we're talking with Colton House and Dad. You know, we're talking to a guy that went to Harvard, right? Like you and I don't. We don't even really deserve to be talking to this guy. He's so much smart, smarter than us. This guy went to Harvard. Do you know anybody that went to Harvard, Dad? Heavens, no. Uh, I, most people <laughs> I knew couldn't spell Harvard. Yeah, well, we're talking to a guy that went to Harvard. Uh, Colton, what does analytics mean? Break that down for me. How do you guys use that? Uh, I wasn't smart enough to do all that. How do, how do you guys use analytics there with Alabama basketball. Now, you, you guys are being modest, but you guys are both very <laughs> accomplished championship coaches, so I don't think anyone believes all that talk. But, uh, you know, <laughs> analytics is huge at the NBA level, has been for a number of years. I think the, ga- the game's changing quickly. Just You know, and analytics is a big part of that. But Coach Avery, you know, obviously can't, comes from an NBA background and was pretty familiar with that. That's an interest of mine. So, um, you know, I think the schedule's a big part of it. I mean, we – kind of took an analytical dive into our schedule and crunched some numbers and tried to use that to help us put a better schedule together. But uh, I think, you know, it can also benefit you when you're looking at a scouting report and or, or looking at your own team and trying to figure out what you can do better because, you know, stats are, have been part of the game since we started playing basketball 100 some years ago. But, you know, the stats kind of change over time. And, and, and when I try to get people on, the, on board with analytics, all I tell them is you're going to look at the box score, you're going to look at the stats anyway, we all know how many points per game we average and rebounds per game and all that, but there's some stats out there that are a little bit better, give you a little bit better picture of what your players or what your team might be doing. So that's all it is, and, and there's a little bit of education involved with some of these newer stats, but once you learn them, uh, they're really not that difficult, and they can really kind of help you get a better understanding of the game. Do you guys look at like which groups, uh, when they're on the floor together, the plus-minus on that? You know, Sometimes you don't really yep. realize it. Those guys are out there. Uh, and you sometimes, uh, dad and I were critical of a few people. They just sub just to sub, uh, but you know, certain combinations play better on the floor. Do you guys, uh, break it down like that? Yep. No, we do. And and I know we're not the only team that does that, but, um, that can be real helpful, especially on defense, you know, offensively, we kind of have more stats to kind of measure efficiency and production, but you know, I, I don't know that all, every coach out there knows what's my best defensive lineup five men if I really need to get a stop what's my best lineup on the floor and sometimes you look at the stats you're talking about with your groups and they can tell you, you can say well when we put these five on the floor when these two big men are in the game together you know we're really a lot better defensively so that's, that's a great example of how analytics can just give you a little window into your team which can really help you and win a game down the line uh Cole, how do you have you guys because I think some people get to Alabama and they almost are jealous of football and they don't utilize it. I think dad was big with utilizing football to help, 
uh, basketball, but I have seen some people really come over there and, and look at it and just, you know, say, Oh, I mean, they're getting this and they're getting that. I know you guys don't do that. You got a big tailgate out there for all the football games with guys coming by former players. How do you guys utilize football to help basketball? Well, again, you hit the nail on the head and, uh, you know, I've been at Alabama going into my ninth year, which isn't as long as you guys, but, but a pretty long time in college sports. And, uh, Grew up here, so I think I understand the, the culture here in the university athletic department pretty well. Um, you, you have to leverage football and utilize football, and, and, and every sport does it. Every sport that has success does it. We're we're not doing the same thing. Softball and golf and tennis and soccer and baseball are doing the same thing, but we're lucky because our recruiting calendar, right, is such that we have signing day in November. So that means our official visits are September, October which is primetime football season. So we love bringing in our recruits, whether it's unofficial visits or official visits, on these home football weekends. And the atmosphere that you can show to these you know, potential uh, basketball players, these, these recruits, on a football weekend, I mean, you guys are there, you see it, it's unbelievable. And if you've never seen it before, it'll, just, it'll blow you away. You know, the, the campus is beautiful, the, the student bodies into it, the fan support. Is like you won't find anywhere else in the country. And I'll tell you what's been awesome for us, Barry, is we'll bring a kid in on, on a visit in football season. He'll see that. And he'll kind of get a taste for what Alabama's all about. And then we can bring him back in basketball season, maybe January, February. <clears throat> we've had a ton of sellout basketball. We've had great fan support since Coach Avery's been here. Like that Oklahoma game last year was probably the best atmosphere at home game I've seen in eight years at Alabama. And – you bring a kid into an SEC football game and let him experience that. A couple months, you bring him to one of these home basketball games. It's a sellout, packed student section and crowd going nuts and, and team winning the game. And <clears throat> it, it, it's really hard to beat that. I mean, we, we've gotten a lot of kids to go ahead and pull the trigger or, or to say Alabama's my favorite just, just by getting them on campus to, to experience that type of atmosphere. Yeah, no doubt. Well, Coach Avery's always talking about taking dad on the road. Uh, with you guys, when you uh, guys have he a takes care of me. Yeah, when you guys have a meal, Col- Colton takes. When care you of guys me. have a meal, has he ever I, missed I, a free meal, Colton, on the road? Well, no, Barry. Listen, you beat me to it. I was going to bring that up, and you beat me oh. to it. Here's what I was going to say: the most important part of our schedule, <laughs> it and who we're playing, and, and and the dates and all that, is which which trips can Coach Sanderson go on with us, right? Because last year he came to Florida, which was a huge win. And he came to St. Louis, which we all know was a huge trip for us. So we played probably our best basketball of the year when he was out there you know, on the road with us. I had a lot to do with yeah, it. Yeah, but I, and you, but your food budget goes up. Because every time you have a meal, he's always kind of walking I, I around. Always, that's all right. Hey, hey, if, it. In. <laughs> if, if we're going to play like that, he can eat all he wants. <laughs> he can eat all he wants. Uh, how, no, much, you know, how much funny, trouble Louis, is it? We were there. We kept winning, so we stayed there darn near a week. And we'd come back to the hotel after we won, and we'd sit down and eat. And I, I sat by your dad for a lot of those. And, and coach, and it's funny because <clears throat> you're pretty pretty quiet to start. And you know, obviously, you're there as a guest of the team, but you you coach the game a long time, and you know the game better than anybody. And I'd, I'd start asking him questions, and then he'd start talking, and it was just it was like sitting at the foot of you know a legend, just hearing everything he had to say and his breakdown of the game. It was man, I, I had a great time just listening to him. Don't Get brag on, on him, Colt. He gets enough on this show. Tom calls <laughs> in. Fun. I had a great Oh, goodness. Me. All right, last question. And be honest. Right now, if Coach Avery Johnson and Coach Petway played one-on-one to ten, who wins? Oh, man, Barry, you're trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> come yeah, on. I wouldn't okay. would answer that Who wins? No, come on, Colton. Well, you know, there's only one answer to that question. I'm, i got to go with Coach Avery. Ah. But uh, he, he's the head man, so every other answer is off the table. I'm going with Coach Avery. <laughs> Coach Johnson in that. All right. <laughs> Well, Colt, we appreciate it, man. It's kind of behind the scenes. You know, uh, Alabama did hit that shot to beat Auburn, uh, and I think they say Sexton saved the season. But to be honest with you, uh, was it Auburn? What did you say, James? A&M. A&M, I'm sorry. To save the – I said Auburn. To save the – then they blew out Auburn the next game. Yeah, we beat Auburn too, Barry. Yeah. You know, you're you're close on that. We we beat both those Uh, But I really honestly believe what you guys did scheduling-wise – uh, behind the scenes, what you did putting that thing together was as big as that shot 
Uh, because if y'all didn't play that non-conference schedule and then you know win some of those games, you probably don't go the NCAA terms. So I don't think you guys get enough credit for what was done there. So uh, congratulations on that. Hopefully you guys will have a have a great season this year. Appreciate you being on with us. Man, thanks Thank so you. much for uh, having me on, yeah, yeah. guys. Enjoy y'all's show and all the support you give our program. So it was a pleasure.